A century after the Valyrian dragon lords of House Targaryen conquered six of seven Westerosi realms, the continent was experiencing the final years of a golden age under King Jaehaerys I, which then continued under his grandson Viserys I, who inherited the Iron Throne in 103 AC. While Viserys was not a brilliant, transformative figure like his grandfather, he was a kind, amiable king well loved by his subjects, continuing most of the policies which led to their years of prosperity. Yet in the matter of succession, Viserys took an uncharacteristically firm and unwavering position, contradicting the carefully considered precedent established by his grandfather in years past. Although the structure of Westerosi society made it function as a feudal monarchy, with local lords maintaining significant power, influence, and armies, the overwhelming might of House Targaryen's dragons, which served as enormous flying fire-breathing beasts of mass destruction, meant the king could act as an absolute monarch, changing laws, ignoring precedent, and establishing reforms as he saw fit. Therefore, when Aima Arryn, the wife of Viserys Targaryen, gave birth to only one surviving child, the king broke free from the tradition of agnatic primogeniture, which demanded a male inherit the throne to name his daughter Rhaenyra as heir. Attending small council meetings and shadowing her father, Rhaenyra spent years training to become the first ruling queen of Westeros, growing into a beautiful, charming, clever young girl beloved by all and nicknamed the realm's delight. After the death of her mother, Aima Arryn, in 105 AC, King Viserys invited the most prominent lords of the realm to a lavish ceremony where he formally declared his daughter Rhaenyra heir to the Iron Throne, prompting the nobles in attendance to pledge their unwavering loyalty to the princess. Yet despite this precaution taken to protect his daughter's position, the first seeds of conflict were planted just a year later when Viserys married Alicent Hightower, a highly ambitious young woman who gave him four children in quick succession, three boys, Aegon, Aemon, and Darren, as well as a girl, Helena, meaning there were now numerous possible male successors. Yet Viserys remained resolute in his decision, making it clear Rhaenyra would continue to be his heir. On reasonably amicable terms for the first few years of their relationship, Princess Rhaenyra and Queen Alicent grew increasingly hostile as they vied to become the most influential woman in the realm. Nowhere was this division more clear than at the great tourney of 111 AC when Princess Rhaenyra donned a beautiful black gown while Alicent wore one of green, leading the royal court to name their respective factions the Blacks and Green. Seeing that her husband the king was adamant his eldest daughter was heir, unwilling to change his mind no matter her arguments, Alicent worked diligently over the years to tarnish Rhaenyra's sterling reputation, thereby chipping away at her support throughout the realm. Unfortunately for the princess, the unusual circumstances surrounding her private life gave the Greens plenty of ammunition for their attacks. Though Rhaenyra married Laenor Valerion in 114 AC, a seemingly good match from a powerful family of Valyrian blood like the Targaryens, rumors abound that her husband preferred the company of men. Similarly, rumors circulated about Rhaenyra's activities, with some claiming she lost her virginity to her uncle, Daemon Targaryen, and may also have had some sort of relationship with her champion, Sir Criston Cole, a knight of the King's Guard, madly devoted to the princess, until a highly contentious rift of unknown origins formed between them, causing him to join the Greens, as he burned with hatred for the woman he once loved. The rumors about her private life then worsened during her marriage to Laenor, as she was believed to be sleeping with her new champion, Sir Harwin Strong, a great warrior considered by some as the most physically powerful man in Westeros. Evidence of this affair was seemingly produced when Rhaenyra gave birth to three sons, Jacaris, Lucerys, and Joffrey, none of whom had the silver-white hair, violet eyes, or delicate features of Laenor, instead born with a brown hair, brown eyes, and pug nose of Harwin Strong. Yet everyone involved vehemently denied the accusations, leading to arguments, fights, and increased tensions between blacks and greens. Even after Rhaenyra moved with her family out of the capital to Dragonstone, the rumors and conflict persisted until King Viserys had enough, and in 120 AC declared that anyone heard disparaging his grandchildren's lineage would have their tongue removed, while also ordering Harwin Strong back to his home of Harrenhal, where he later died in a mysterious fire. In addition to losing a possible lover, Rhaenyra lost her husband Laenor in that same year, with stories claiming he was killed by a male lover. Having previously agreed to a political union, this time the princess married her uncle Daemon Targaryen, the man she'd loved since her youth. 
Yet Damon was a rogue prince, beloved by some but hated by many others, living a life of hedonism and adventure, experiencing such wild extremes that at some points in his life he mingled with prostitutes and vagrants in the streets of King's Landing, while at other times he struck out to build his legacy, briefly becoming a king in his own right when he raised an army and conquered the Stepstones. As a consequence of living such an unorthodox lifestyle, one of his most hated enemies was Otto Hightower, the father of Alicent Hightower and Hand of the King, adding yet another layer of conflict between the Blacks and Greens. Though Viserys saw the terrible rift forming in his family, his conflict-averse, jovial spirit made him unable or unwilling to remedy the situation, aside from ensuring they did not squabble in his presence. As a result, any good he accomplished throughout his reign was entirely overshadowed by the factional division he allowed in his court, which ultimately led to the worst, most devastating civil war in Targaryen history. Events finally came to a head in 129 AC when King Viserys died in his sleep at the age of 52, causing Queen Alicent to call for a meeting of the small council, where she immediately set her plans into motion, completely ignoring the wishes of her deceased husband to crown her eldest son as King of Westeros. Having spent years ensuring the council was comprised of green supporters, nearly all agreed to pledge themselves to Aegon Targaryen, save for old Lord Beesbury, the master of coin, who refused and accused them of stealing Rhaenyra's crown. Accounts differ on what happened next, with some claiming he was arrested and died in a cell, while others say Sir Criston Cole, now the champion of Queen Alicent, immediately slit his throat or threw him from a window. In any case, loyal Lord Beesbury became the first casualty in the dents of the Dragon Civil War. For seven days, the Greens kept the death of Viserys secret so they could remove and replace all their enemies at court, until finally the King's Guard Sir Criston Cole crowned Aegon II as King of Westeros, claiming legitimacy through tradition and historical precedent, including the conclusion to the Great Council of 101 AC under King Jaehaerys I, which stated a woman could not inherit the Iron Throne over a male claimant. Born from the machinations of Alicent and Otto Hightower, Aegon Targaryen had no ambition to be king, and when presented with the idea, refused, stating he had no desire to steal his sister's crown. But Kristen Cole eventually convinced him his family would be killed if Rhaenyra became queen, as she would no doubt seek to eliminate her rivals. Believing the safety of his family was at stake, Aegon saw no choice but to take the throne and commit himself to the war. Over on Dragonstone, Rhaenyra was pregnant with her sixth child, having given birth to two more sons with Daemon Targaryen, naming them Aegon and Viserys. But when she heard her father was dead and younger brother usurped the throne, her rage was so intense she went into early labor and lost the child, blaming Aegon the Elder, Alicent, and their supporters for the death. Calling upon her allies, Rhaenyra was crowned the true queen of Westeros from her seat on Dragonstone, proudly wearing the crown of her father Viserys and great-grandfather Jaehaerys, as it was stolen from the royal palace by Sir Stephen Darklin, a knight of the King's Guard who abandoned Aegon II, believing she was the rightful queen. Gathering her most loyal supporters, including her husband Daemon Targaryen, her father's cousin Rhaenys Targaryen, the sea snake Lord Corlys Valerion, and her three eldest sons, Rhaenyra held the first meeting of the Black Council, where they went over their strategy for the war. Seeking powerful allies, Queen Rhaenyra sent her eldest son Jaehaerys upon Vermax to the Vale of Arryn in the north, while Lucerys rode Arax to the Stormlands. Hoping to keep them from harm, Rhaenyra sent them only as messengers, forbidding them from engaging in combat. Her husband, however, Daemon Targaryen, flying atop Caraxes, had no such restriction when he flew to the Riverlands. Fortunately for the locals, no violence was necessary, as House Strong surrendered Harrenhal without a fight. Winning the support of House Blackwood, Queen Rhaenyra's forces won the Battle of the Burning Mill and Battle of Stonehenge, defeating House Bracken, the greatest green supporter in the region. While Daemon completed his conquest of the Riverlands, 15-year-old Jaehaerys embraced his role as a diplomat, securing alliances with House Arryn of the Vale, as well as several of the most powerful houses in the North, including the Manderleys, Burrells, and Sunderlands, before securing the Pact of Ice and Fire with Lord Cregan of House Stark, promising a marriage between the Starks and Targaryens. Yet while their two northern ventures succeeded, the southern mission, led by Lucerys, thought to be the safest of the three, ended in complete disaster making the mistake of assuming Boros Baratheon was with the Blacks because his father was an ardent supporter of Rhaenyra, Lucerys arrived to find Aemond of the Greens negotiating an alliance. Boros informed Lucerys that Aemond offered to marry one of his daughters, and since Rhaenyra's boys were all betrothed, the Blacks could not beat that offer. Still holding a grudge for the loss of his eye, Aemond wanted to attack the boy, but Boros forbid it in his hall. 
However, once Luceris flew away, Boros gave permission for Aemon to give chase. Engaging in the dance over Shipbreaker Bay, young Arax was no match for Vagar, and so both Luceris and his dragon were killed. While Rhaenyra cried and raged over the death of her son, Daemon Targaryen swore vengeance and reached out to his underworld contacts in the capital, arranging for the assassin's blood and cheese to infiltrate the Red Keep using secret tunnels underneath. Killing a handmaiden, they captured Alicent, Helena, Jaehaerys, Jahera, and Maelor before forcing the king's wife to choose which of her three children would die. Threatening to rape her daughter and kill them all if she refused, Helena reluctantly chose her youngest Maelor, reasoning that he did not understand what was happening and would not suffer. But the assassins instead cut off the head of her eldest son, Jaehaerys, before fleeing into the night. Blood was soon caught trying to escape the city with the prince's head in a bag, and so was tortured and killed. But Cheese and the former dancer Miseria, who arranged it all for Daemon, were never caught. This powerful act of vengeance then did further damage as Queen Helena grew depressed and despondent, unable to look at her son Maelor since she named him to die. The king, meanwhile, fell to drink and rage, consumed by hatred. Though Aegon enjoyed the company of many women aside from his wife, their marriage remained amicable until the death of their child when they stopped sleeping together or even communicating at all. Hoping to strike back against the Blacks, Sir Criston Cole sent the King's Guard, Arik Cargyle, on a mission to infiltrate Dragonstone, posing as his twin brother Eric, who served as Queen's Guard for Rhaenyra. On a mission of assassination, possibly against the Queen or her children, his target was never discovered, as he was spotted and exposed by his brother before completing the mission. Engaging in single combat to the death, stories say the brothers killed each other out of knightly duty but died in each other's arms, while others, like Rhaenyra's jester Mushroom, claim they suffered grievous wounds quickly and cursed each other as traitors. With the Blacks winning allies and striking back with fury against the Greens, the Hand of the King Otto Hightower did his best to strengthen their position, but largely failed in many areas as he was unable to secure an alliance with Dorne, which claimed neutrality, was receiving no reply from his messages to the Ironborn, and could not even secure his own homeland of the Reach, where only the Houses Hightower and Redwine pledged for Aegon, while Houses Costain, Mullendor, Tarly, Rowan, and Grimm sided with Rhaenyra. House Tyrell, seeing their realm divided, declared neutrality. Sending word to Ormond Hightower to destroy the enemy lords of the Reach, Otto next set his sights across the sea to Essos, where the Kingdom of the Three Daughters agreed to ally with Aegon Targaryen in exchange for the Stepstones and trade rights. Yet this victory was too little to make an immediate impact, and the corrupt, inefficient Kingdom of the Three Daughters needed time to prepare their forces. Therefore, the King dismissed his grandfather and appointed Kristen Cole as Hand of the King. Far more violent and warlike than his predecessor, Cole implemented an aggressive strategy, beginning by executing all Black Faction prisoners unless they bent the knee to Aegon. Yet only three submitted, while the rest chose to keep their honor in death. Entering into a new phase of the war, Westeros was properly fractured, with the North, Riverlands, and Vale pledged to Rhaenyra, the Westerlands and Stormlands siding with Aegon, the Reach and Crownlands divided, Dorne remaining neutral, and the Iron Islands undeclared. Therefore, Cole first elected to focus on the nearby Crown Lands, which, outside the capital, largely stood with Rhaenyra, sacking Duskendale and beheading its lord. Cole then moved on to Rook's Rest, but House Staunton had time to send for aid, prompting Princess Rhaenys of the Blacks to arrive on her dragon Maelies. Engaging in the Battle of Rook's Rest, Kristen Cole attacked the enemy from the ground with scorpions and archers, while King Aegon flew on Sunfire and Prince Aemond upon Vagar. Badly outnumbered, Rhaenys nonetheless put up a valiant struggle, seeing Maelies viciously bite Sunfire's neck, which caused a chaotic melee between all three that sent them crashing to the ground. Suffering a terrible defeat, Rhaenys and her dragon were killed, while Aemond and Vagar emerged unharmed, completing the conquest of Rook's Rest. The king and his dragon, meanwhile, also survived, but were both critically wounded, with Sunfire tearing a wing and Aegon suffering burns and broken bones. The king was so injured, he required months of painful recovery, spending most of his time sedated with milk of the poppy. As Aegon II was incapacitated, his brother Aemon Targaryen was named regent as protector of the realm. A harsh, courageous, and bloody-minded warrior bonded to the oldest, most powerful dragon known to exist, Aemon was prepared to escalate the war and achieve victory at any cost. As Sunfire was unable to fly, a garrison was left to feed and protect him, but this small force could not stand when House Mooton recaptured Rook's Rest and sent their warriors to slay the dragon. Although Sunfire's wound did not heal perfectly, he was recovered enough to defend himself and take flight, escaping further harm. 
Devastated by the loss of his beloved wife, Corlys Valerion nearly left Rhaenyra's cause, but was convinced to stay when Jacaris named him Hand of the Queen. Though the Blacks had many powerful allies, most were far from the center of the conflict, making it difficult to respond quickly and with adequate force in or near the Crownlands. Thus, the death of Rhaenys prompted the Queen to send away the younger children of her family, as well as their dragons, for safety, sending Joffrey, Taraxis, and three dragon eggs to the Vale of Arryn alongside Rhaena Targaryen, Daemon's daughter from his first marriage, while Aegon the Younger, Stormcloud, Viserys, and a dragon egg were sent to be fostered by the Prince of Pentos. With his brothers gone, the Queen's heir, Jacaris Valerion, took on increasing responsibilities in the next stage of the war. Knowing that Targaryen men over the years fathered many illegitimate children with small folk and nobility alike, Jacaris thought up a plan to raise more dragon riders by putting out a call to the people of Dragonstone, promising great reward to any who successfully bonded a dragon. Though many failed, were wounded, or even burned alive, some few succeeded, like Hugh Hammer upon Vermithor, Ulf the White upon Silverwing, Adam of Hall on Sea Smoke, and the girl Nettles riding Sheep Stealer. Adam of Hall and his brother Alan were bastard-born children, supposedly fathered by Laenor Valerion, though they were more likely the children of Corlys Valerion. Therefore, when Adam claimed a dragon, Rhaenyra legitimized both brothers, allowing the Lord of Driftmark to name the eldest his heir. With the dragon seeds at their backs, the Blacks gained a decisive advantage over the enemy, but soon suffered a catastrophe in the Battle of the Gullet, remembered as one of the bloodiest sea battles in history. At last fulfilling their agreement, the Kingdom of the Three Daughters sent a fleet of 90 ships to break the Valerion Sea blockade around the capital, but first, they ran into the vessel carrying Rhaenyra's sons to Pentos, able to capture Viserys and his dragon egg, while Aegon fled atop Stormcloud, who was gravely wounded but nonetheless made it to Dragonstone, ensuring his rider's safety before dying. The fleet then attacked the Valerion ships at the Gullet, causing Jacaris to lead the dragon seeds into battle, destroying 62 of 90 vessels. The foreign fleet, however, had experience fighting dragons, able to bring down Vermax and kill its rider Jacaris. The remaining fleet was also able to sack and burn nearby Spice Town and High Tide on Driftmark, eliminating a third of the Valerion fleet, slaughtering their people and destroying much of Corley's Valerion's wealth. Though the fleet sailed back to Essos with much treasure and a valuable war hostage, the overwhelming loss of ships and men caused the Kingdom of the Three Daughters to consider the battle a miserable defeat, leading to a political crisis and their very own civil war. Though the Greens struck a devastating blow with the death of Jacaris and sacking of Driftmark, their allies in Essos were now out of the war and the Valerion fleet remained in control of the Narrow Sea, meaning the Battle of the Gullet was technically a black victory as the enemy failed to end the blockade of the capital. Distraught by the death of yet another son, matters worsened for Rhaenyra during the Battle of the Honeywine in the Reach, when her allies were on the brink of victory against House Hightower, only for Prince Darren, the youngest brother of King Aegon, to fly his dragon Tesserion into battle, defeating the Blacks. Targeting the Riverlands, the Greens, Aemond and Kristen Cole, led an army to Harrenhal, expecting to face Daemon Targaryen, but the fortress was empty as the rogue prince departed, eventually making his way to Maidenpool, where he remained for a time with the dragon seed Nettles, possibly beginning a romantic affair. Seeking to join Aemon's host at Harrenhal, House Lannister of the Westerlands led over 8,000 men into their eastern neighbor. Yet the Lords of the Riverlands knew their territory well and were committed to victory, repeatedly throwing themselves and their warriors at the Lannister army, whittling down enemy forces. Despite House Lannister winning the battle at the Red Fork and battle at Acorn Hall, they lost two commanders and many men along the way, with the Riverlords continually regrouping and renewing their attacks. The last stand defense against the Lannister advance then followed at the Battle by the Lakeshore, where the River Lords were joined by Lord Roderick Dustin and the Winter Wolves, 2,000 hard-fighting Northern warriors unwilling to wait for the larger Northern host to gather, and marched south seeking a glorious death. In keeping with the tradition of older men voluntarily leaving their homes to die in the wilderness, thereby ensuring more food for their family during harsh winter months. Thus, the Winter Wolves were entirely prepared to die, making them possibly the most fearsome, devastating fighters in the entire war. Engaging in what was alternatively called the Fish Feed, the Lannister army was entirely destroyed, while the Blacks lost 2,000 men, including two-thirds of the Winter Wolves who fought with unparalleled ferocity. The defeat of the Greens in the Riverlands then went on to have reverberating effects across the continent, leading to many more victories for the Blacks, like in the Westerlands, where the destruction of their armies meant the wealthy realm was largely undefended. 
This in turn caused the Red Kraken of House Greyjoy to declare for the Blacks so he could plunder the Westerlands and Reach, capturing Case and Fair Isle as well as sacking Lannisport. Meanwhile, Rhaenyra was still heartbroken by the death of her sons and could hold back her wrath no longer. Organizing the invasion of King's Landing, Rhaenyra and her husband atop their dragons took the capital in less than a day as the Green Armies were on campaign and the garrison was betrayed by the Gold Cloaks, city watchmen loyal to their former commander Daemon Targaryen. Finally set upon her rightful throne, Rhaenyra set about dealing with those captured during the conquest. Unfortunately for the Queen, however, these did not include her still-injured rival Aegon II, who escaped under the care of Larys Strong. Neither did she find the king's children, Jehera and Maelor, as they were sent away with the king's guard to supposedly safe locations. Yet while Jehera arrived at Storm's End without issue, young Maelor was attacked and killed by an angry mob at Bitterbridge in the Reach. Though Rhaenyra was robbed of these captives, those remaining in the capital included the increasingly depressed Queen Helena, held captive in her room but largely left alone until she finally threw herself from a window, ending her own life, possibly after learning about Maelor's death. Another valuable prisoner was the Queen's longtime hated rival, Alicent Hightower, who was spared physical harm, but nonetheless suffered greatly in captivity, ripping apart her clothes and cursing Rhaenyra when she learned of Helena's death. Others on the Green Council, like Alicent's father, Sir Otto Hightower, and Sir Jasper Wilde, were executed, while Sir Tylen Lannister was given to torturers. At the height of Rhaenyra's reign, when she made plans to finish off her enemies, Alicent tried to negotiate with the Queen, offering a compromise where the kingdom was split in two. But Rhaenyra refused, explaining that she would have given her enemies positions of honor in her court, but they gave up any chance of generosity when they stole her birthright and killed her sons. Back in the Riverlands, Aemond and Kristen Cole heard about the many green defeats across the continent and left Harrenhal, with the Regent going on a one Dragon Rider campaign of terror across the region while the Hand of the King led his army to the Reach. Yet the warriors of these lands were now hardened veterans with burgeoning reputations, who alongside their ferocious northern allies were unwilling to let the hated Kingmaker retreat without issue, whittling down his forces through hit and run attacks, until their final victory in the Butcher's Ball, utterly slaughtering the Greens and killing Kristen Cole. Having won a great victory in the Reach, Ormond Hightower marched his Green Army west, hoping to take back King's Landing. Along the way, they continued to accumulate victories against House Merryweather in the Siege of Longtable and House Caswell in the Burning of Bitterbridge, where Darren and Tessarion sought vengeance for the death of his nephew, Maelor. With their enemies reinforced by men from the Riverlands, the next battle was fought at Tumbleton, where Rhaenyra's forces might have won a great victory if not for the traitorous dragon seeds Hugh Hammer and Ulf the White, who betrayed the Blacks and secured victory for the Greens. Yet this battle was not a total loss for the Blacks, as the Winter Wolves of the North fought with such ferocity, they carved their way through enemy ranks to kill the commanders Ormond and Brynden Hightower. This victory also had other negative consequences for the Greens, as Hugh Hammer and Ulf the White proved to be honorless vagrants without loyalty to anyone but themselves. Back in King's Landing, the increasingly paranoid Queen was appalled by the betrayal of the two Dragon Seeds and feared the others might turn as well, ordering the arrest of Adam Valerion and Nettles. Warned by his grandfather, Adam escaped King's Landing on his Dragon Sea Smoke, leading to the arrest of Corlys Valerion, which in turn caused his fleet to abandon the Queen. Nettles, meanwhile, was under the protection of her possible lover, Daemon Targaryen, who refused to comply with Rhaenyra's order, instead sending Nettles flying away to safety, while he dropped all other priorities and spread the word he was waiting for Aemon Targaryen in Harrenhal. The brother of the king then arrived on Vagar and engaged Daemon upon Caraxes in the Battle of the God's Eye, ending with both dragons locked together as they crashed into the ground. Just before impact, Daemon ensured his enemy's death by jumping from his seat to launch through the air, stabbing Aemon through his one eye with the Valyrian steel sword Dark Sister. Eventually, the remains of the dragons Caraxes and Vagar were found, along with the corpse of Aemon Targaryen. Daemon's remains, however, were never located, causing some to claim he survived and spent the rest of his days with his beloved Nettles. Finding herself in an increasingly difficult situation, Rhaenyra unknowingly suffered yet another blow when Larry Strong smuggled the recuperating Aegon II onto Dragonstone, where he reunited with his dragon Sunfire. Gathering all those willing to betray Rhaenyra, they launched a coup and took Dragonstone for the Greens. Princess Bela, the daughter of Daemon, rode Moondancer against the enemy, but her dragon was killed by Sunfire and she was captured. Aegon II survived the fighting, but once again suffered a terrible injury by breaking his legs. 
With the queen's fortunes crumbling all around her, rioters were creating chaos in the capital, allowing petty usurpers to rise and find followers. Like when the knight Sir Perkin the Flea declared Tristan Truefire as king of Westeros, claiming his legitimacy as the bastard son of old King Viserys I and bestowing knighthood on any willing to join them. At the same time, a mad prophet called the Shepherd rallied a great mob to storm the Dragon Pit, hoping to slaughter the remaining dragons of House Targaryen, naming them demons, bringing forth the doom of men. Desperate to protect the dragons and fight like his brothers had, young Joffrey Valerion disobeyed orders, mounted his mother's dragon Syrax, and flew into battle. Unfortunately for the prince, Syrax was unaccustomed to his weight and tossed him off mid-flight, sending him falling to his death below. Losing her mind with worry, Rhaenyra sought aid in retrieving her son, causing seven courageous knights to voluntarily ride out amidst the chaos, seeking the boy. Remembered as the Seven Who Rode, Sir Giles Ironwood, Sir Willem Royce, and Lord Commander Glendon Good were killed, while the rest successfully found Joffrey's remains and brought them to the Queen. Meanwhile, the storming of the Dragon Pit continued, resulting in the deaths of numerous dragons, including Shrikos, Morgul, Taraxis, Dreamfire, and Syrax. They in turn burned and killed a great many rioters, eventually collapsing the domed roof to crush all beneath. With the city lost, Rhaenyra fled with Aegon the Younger, believing he was her only surviving child, though Viserys still lived as a captive in Essos. In the Reach, Sir Hobart Hightower was left in command of the army, which to this point largely succeeded in conquering the territory for the Greens. Yet he was unable to capitalize on their victories, as the two dragon seed betrayers were greedy and belligerent, refusing to move until their outrageous demands were met, all the while gathering many dishonorable warriors to their cause. While Ulf the White wanted Highgarden, the capital of the Reach held by House Tyrell, Hugh Hammer sought an even greater prize, donning a crown of black iron to proclaim himself King of Westeros. When young Daeron Targaryen objected by throwing wine in Hugh's face, he threatened to beat the boy, and when Sir Roger Corn removed the crown, the would-be king nailed three horseshoes to his skull. Their increasing retinue of men and fearsome dragons, combined with the army's loss of a unifying leader, meant the betrayers were formidable obstacles to progress that could not be easily overcome and would ultimately destroy them. Unwilling to allow Hugh Hammer's treason, the Caltrop conspiracy formed, wherein a group of nobles sought to assassinate the two betrayers. Yet before they could strike, the Second Battle of Tumbleton erupted when Adam Valerion and Sea Smoke led a Riverland army of 4,000 blacks in a vicious surprise attack. Unable to live with the shame of being named a traitor, Adam fought with tremendous courage, engaging in a chaotic melee with the riderless dragons Vermithor and Tessarion, ending with all of them dead or gravely wounded to die soon after. A brutal battle resulting in many nobles and warriors killed, young Prince Darren Targaryen was the most notable figure among them, meaning that of Alicent Hightower's four children and three grandchildren, only Aegon II and Jahera remained. Winning a great victory for the Blacks, the Greens were unable to count on the Betrayers, as Ulf the White was so drunk he slept through the fighting, and Hugh Hammer was killed by the valiant Green Caltrop, Bull John Roxton, who was then cut down by the False King's men. Though they lost the battle, many Green nobles survived as the gate to the city remained closed, and the enemy army had no more dragons or siege equipment. Therefore, the Blacks looted the dead and moved on, while the Greens remained with the shattered remnants of their army in town. Deciding to rid themselves of Ulf the White, who was quick to name himself king after Hugh's death, the Caltrops gifted him poisoned wine. Yet the betrayer grew suspicious, and so Sir Hobart Hightower willingly sacrificed himself by drinking the wine and praising its taste, thereby giving Ulf the confidence to partake. Both died moments later. No longer finding a friendly welcome in the Crown Lands, most of Rhaenyra's men deserted, and she was forced to sell her crown to buy passage on a ship. Among those still loyal to the Queen were the Manderleys of White Harbor, who begged her to retreat north where she had many allies. But Rhaenyra suffered so much despair and endured such endless bouts of rage, she could no longer think rationally, refusing all sage advice to instead make her way to Dragonstone, unaware her brother Aegon already took the fortress. Capturing the Queen and her son, Aegon the Younger was held hostage and forced to watch his mother, Queen Rhaenyra of the Black Faction, rightful heir to Viserys I, burned alive and eaten by the usurper's dragon, Sunfire. Having survived many injuries and won many battles throughout his life, Sunfire's wounds eventually grew worse and he passed away on Dragonstone. With the Queen dead, Aegon II returned to King's Landing and once again sat upon the Iron Throne, finding a city in chaos from rebels and traitors. Having lost control of the capital for a period known as the Moon of Three Kings, the Shepherd ruled his mob from the ruins of the Dragon Pit, while Tristane Truefire and Sir Perkin the Flea took the Red Keep. 
Then there was Gaiman Pale Hair, the five-year-old son of a prostitute crowned king in a brothel atop Visenya's Hill, claiming legitimacy as the bastard son of Aegon II. With his mother in control, Gaiman Pale Hair issued numerous progressive decrees seeking to create equality between men and women. Yet these would-be rulers were soon swept aside by the armies of House Baratheon, which joined Aegon in the capital. Defeating all three pretenders, Tristain and the prostitute were executed, while Gaiman Palehair was spared and made a ward of House Targaryen. The Shepherd, who remained defiant until the end, was burned alive along with hundreds of his supporters. Though Rhaenyra was dead, Aegon set the Iron Throne and a Baratheon army held the capital. Aegon II and the Green Faction somehow found themselves on the verge of total annihilation. In this final phase of the war, the North, Riverlands, Vale, and Iron Islands were firmly with the Blacks, while the Crownlands, Reach, and Westerlands were neutralized, leaving only the Stormlands and capital with Aegon II. Yet of all the enemies they were now facing, the most insurmountable was the Northern Army of Lord Craig and Stark, who finally finished gathering a massive host of up to 20,000 men to conquer the South for Rhaenyra's son Aegon the Younger. Joining his march to victory were the armies of the Vale, while the Riverland army, recently victorious in the Reach, were even closer, mere days away from King's Landing. Seeking to end the immediate threat, Lord Boros Baratheon led his army out of the capital and engaged the Riverlords in the Battle of the King's Road, but he greatly underestimated the young, highly capable enemy leaders like Lord Kermit Tully, Lord Benjikot Blackwood, and Lady Alison Blackwood, known collectively as the Lads, and their grizzled veteran warriors, dismissing them as boys and women, only to be soundly defeated. Seeing the tide turning against the Greens, the Crown Lands contingent betrayed the Baratheon army as they attempted to retreat, leading to complete and total victory for the Blacks. A courageous warrior to the end, Boros slew a dozen knights, as well as the Lords Derry and Malister, before falling to Kermit Tully. Left with no army at all and the River Lords only one day from the capital, Aegon II was finished and the Greens defeated, but still he refused to consider surrender. When Corlys Valerion, who was released from prison and named Master of Ships for the King, suggested Aegon join the Night's Watch, the King instead played his final hand by ordering his hostage, Aegon the Younger's ear cut off so it could be sent to the Blacks as a warning that the boy would be killed if they moved on the capital. This would be the last order he ever gave, as Aegon II, usurper King of the Green Faction, was found dead sometime later, assassinated by poisoned wine. Hoping to avoid further bloodshed, Lord Corlys Valerion set about establishing peace before the enemy could arrive, crowning Rhaenyra's son Aegon III as King of Westeros, hoping this might end the civil war on satisfying terms for the approaching armies. But he was mistaken, as only Lord Craig and Stark of Winterfell held the power and authority to end this conflict, and he would allow no peace until his honor was satisfied. Though the lads of the Riverlands were happy to meet Corlys Valerion and accept an easy victory, they quickly fell in line behind Craig and Stark, both fearing his wrath and admiring his abilities as a warrior and leader, agreeing to follow his command in how the war must proceed. Known as the Hour of the Wolf, Craig and Stark ruled as Hand of the King, making plans for his massive army to launch a campaign of vengeance against all those who defied Queen Rhaenyra, including the Stormlands, Reach, and Westerlands. He also imprisoned those suspected of murdering Aegon II without his authorization, ultimately calling for the execution of 22 prisoners, including Corlys Valerion. Yet while Craig and Stark was ready to shed as much blood as he deemed necessary, his harsher tendencies were slowly softened by Lady Alison Blackwood, who grew romantically involved with the Lord, offering sage advice that might spare Westeros further suffering. Falling in love with and marrying Lady Alison, Cregan agreed to forego his campaign of vengeance, spared the life of Corlys Valerion, and allowed most of the condemned to join the Night's Watch, though the King's Guard Giles Belgrave and Master of Whisperers Larys Strong chose death and thus were personally executed by Lord Stark, wielding Ice, the Valyrian steel sword of his family. As for Lady Alicent, whose machinations led to such destruction, she went mad in captivity and eventually died, a sad, lonely wretch, haunted by the memories of all those she'd lost. Thus it was that the dance of the Dragon's Civil War finally ended, leaving Aegon III, the eleven-year-old son of Rhaenyra, as King of Westeros. Though Craig and Stark was granted many rewards by the Crown, he refused to take a position on the Regency Council and only served as Hand of the King for two weeks before returning to Winterfell, leaving the Southerners to their own affairs. After two years of vicious fighting, the lands of Westeros were utterly ravaged, losing many towns, castles, resources, and lives. Yet perhaps the most impactful consequence of this terrible civil war came from the death of so many dragons and members of the royal family, which left House Targaryen's power and influence massively reduced, lessening further with each passing year until the dragons entirely died out, allowing for the overthrow of their dynasty by King Robert Baratheon of the Stormlands in 283 AC. 
Following the dance, only four dragons survived, two of which remained wild the rest of their lives, while Sheep Stealer flew with nettles and played no more part in the affairs of Westeros. That left mourning as the only dragon of House Targaryen by the end of 131 AC, with the king's half-sister Reyna as their only dragon rider. A special thanks to all those who contribute to Civilization X, like Sir Jeremiah Ironside of House Comcia, Sir Darren of House Ashford, Christ Walder the Crimson Shadow, and Sir Alendil of Numenor. If you'd like to help the channel, be sure to give a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and click on the links below, or else go to patreon.com slash civilizationx, where you can gain early access to videos, vote on future content, and watch the Patreon-only series, Heroes of Lore and Legend.